morning everyone, Donna Westwood from the Senior Leadership Team at Kemnall. You're all here to um, do some team learning and I've got a quote here I'd like to share with you from uh, David Kolb, who you may have heard of, who's written about effective teams. So this is a bit like the Bob Dylan video. There's your quote, I'm not going to read it out to you. and spoke to some of my colleagues this morning when I knew I was going to be talking about effective teams to you and I've got some um, interesting definitions from um, both my colleagues and from a team development program that we're actually following ourselves at the moment as a senior leadership team. So this is what we came up with, effective teams are clear about their goals and are able to focus on common goals. They are able to identify strategies and take responsibility. They're also able to generate ideas and solve problems. Members of the team should be able to develop resources that respond to their customers or their clients' needs. In our environment, that's obviously responding to our students' needs. They should be able to trust each other and understand their similarities and their differences. It's very important that they share not only their uh, similarities but also their individual skills and they value it <laughs> and they value their individual differences so I think to sum it all up effective teams get things done uh, first of all I think it's about getting uh, a shared objective so a direction for where you're going uh, once you've got that you need people's buy-in uh, and once you're happy everyone's going in the right direction uh, then it's the time when you can lay down the expectations the timetable in which those aims are going to be achieved uh, once, again, everyone's happy, you can start, if you like, driving that agenda. Um, and key to the success, perhaps, is uh, regularly uh, seeing uh, how things are progressing and, if you like, trying to solve problems. Um, definitely, it's not a case of coming to someone at the last minute and saying, I need this information. Far more, it's about the collective, working together, uh, using the idea of it's we need to get the goal done, and making sure everyone's actually working in the right direction and not doing their own thing. In my opinion, to lead a good team, you should lead by example. If you work hard yourself, if you're committed and dedicated, then other people will follow. You need to know the strengths and the weaknesses of your department, and you need to guide them when they're floundering, and you need to leave them so that they're able to fly and take wings when they're good at things themselves. You need to have attention to detail. You need to make sure that everyone in your department always meets the deadlines, and you're there before they miss the deadline, to help them and make sure that they meet those deadlines and that you meet them themselves because everything you do they'll copy. You need to praise them and reward them, remember their birthdays and special days in their life so that they feel you've got an understanding of them. Be in contact with them on the phone or email and if they make contact with you it might be that they need your support so be there with a phone call or an email back. Get the groups and the members to work together. We've tried more with team planning and group work, group marking and stuff, so people don't feel isolated. Find out what people's strengths are and ask them to lead those groups. Delegate a bit so you're not doing everything yourself. We're very lucky that we've got a good team base, so use that team base so that people feel it's a place where they can go and let off steam, have a cup of coffee and a biscuit, make sure there is always coffee and biscuits and tea so that people can sit down. Don't try, try not to, and I know it's hard, get involved in the negative aspects. If you give up, if you're moaning, if you're the one that's always fed up, then where can the rest of the department go? Uh, leading a team is really important, and if all the teams work well, then that's what makes a, a great school. Thank you. In my opinion, to lead a good team means to lead by example. Being a core, core subject, just like Joy's, um, it's really important that the, the teams are led effectively with very good management from the top. I think it's important to be honest with your department and I think it's important to have an open door pol policy so that they feel they can always come and speak to you so that they can share any problems. Delegation is important too. I think um, within our faculty we've got small teams that work on particular schemes of work, particular year groups just to make sure that the burden spread between the faculty and then everybody can take ownership of the work that they've put in. Deadlines, as Joyce said, very important that you lead by example is that if you meet those deadlines 
and it gives you a chance to check the deadlines before the school wants the deadlines in, then that helps you quality assure your faculty. Um, we have an open door policy with lessons in that we're all free to walk in and out of each other's lessons if we need to for support um, and I just think it's important for the faculty to know that your door is always open. I'm always at the end of, of the phone if they need me during holiday time and I hope that they feel supported. There's no I in team. The team is a team that can communicate well, a team that can actually uh, where people can talk together, where they can exchange ideas, whether they're good or bad, whether it's positive or negative, and where people can actually feel they, they're respected by one another. I feel um, it works when people are using their emotional intelligence as well, when they're actually listening to one another and, and using their empathy towards one another. And I think that they can grow even, even stronger as a team. Um, I think that's about it. ability to work together. It helps if you get to know each other fairly well, uh, know your strengths and weaknesses, uh, to communicate with each other and to feedback any uh, things that you've done recently, uh, to report back, keep each other in the loop as they say, I'm sure, even though I don't like that phrase, um, uh, continually report back. Uh, sometimes it helps to designate, designate responsibilities but more than ever to get on with each other and work together and help each other where there's any areas that you need to Jessica, can I thank you for asking me what makes an effective team? Um, people think that it's really easy to build a team or they say, I'd like to build a team um, or they put down, I have good team building skills. And actually when you uncover it, they're not really sure what it actually means. And my view is that you need to build an effective team. And what I mean by effective team is that someone, a team of individuals come together with a particular goal or clear aims that they all work towards. They have, they are really clear on what the bigger picture is. So um, I sat down and I thought, and I've jotted down a few points, um, what I believe to be an effective team. And if I take the senior leadership group team, um, all the people around that team have particular skills, strengths, expertise, knowledge um, that complement each other and all work towards this clear common goal to move the school now from a satisfactory school with good aspects to an outstanding school. And the question I ask myself is, what can that particular person bring to the table that the school needs, that I need for that journey to happen? And within that team, I would build in succession planning so that if somebody leaves, the team hasn't got gaps or a particular project falls apart. So the team takes a lot of hard work but at the key is having a clear vision of where you want that team to be. So I hope that um, clarifies what an, eff an effective team is.